In the passage that we read this morning, the children of Israel, rather the remnant of Judah that had been cast aside, that had been out in exile, they came back to a place and were seeking after the Lord. They had been rescued by Johanan, the captain of the host, and they had been brought to a place, brought back to their land. They were in a place that the Lord had promised them. And they got to a place where they said, you know what, we're, we're back in our homeland now, we're back in a place, we need to seek after the Lord, we need to hear from the Lord and, and to hear what he desires to say to us. And so they went to the prophet, we're going to get straight to the point, because as I said, time has already been far spent, so they went to the prophet and they said, listen, prophet, we need you to, we're asking you to go to the Lord on our behalf this morning, but we need to hear the, from the Lord, we need to hear a word from the Lord, we need to have directives from the Lord. We're in a state and we don't know what to do, so we need some direction from the Lord. Is there anyone here that needs direction yes. from the Lord this morning? The word from the Lord. So they came to Jeremiah and said, Jeremiah, listen, see, we beseech you. In other words, we beg of you. Go to the Lord on our behalf. Seek the Lord and hear what he has to say. And when he says, when he brings you a word, when he brings you the word that he has for us, then we will obey, then we will follow, then we will hear the word and we will walk therein. Right. And so Jeremiah says, okay, you know, you, you beseech me and I will go before the Lord on your behalf. But notice, yeah. you know, you'll be held by your word. You said that right. you do what he would say. Right. You said that whatever word came forth from the Lord, right. you would do it. Yes. And so they said, yes, let the Lord be a witness before us. We stand here this day in your sight and in the sight of the Lord God, our God, and that we will declare his word and we will do what he has told us to do. Yes. And so Jeremiah went before the Lord. Jeremiah went before the Lord and he besieged the Lord. He sought the Lord on the people's behalf. He said, I'll pray unto the Lord your God right. according to your words. For as we've been talking about in New Commerce class, the Lord promised to Abraham that he would be the God of his people. Right. That he would make of him a great nation. Right. Wherever he went, they would be with them and he'd keep them and bring them back to this promised land. Right. Right. And so we see that throughout the pages of scripture, that promise is being fulfilled. Yeah. Even though Abraham in the natural is dead and gone, God still kept his promise right. to his people. Right. One thing you need to understand about this God that you serve is that he is a promise keeper. He is a promise keeper. Whatever he said he would do, he will do. No matter what your situation looks like, no matter your circumstances, the Lord always keeps his promise. But you see, the funny thing about promises are that it usually takes two to tango. For we've been talking about covenants. And one of the things that we've seen when we look at covenants is that it's an agreement between two or more parties. In other words, if I enter into a covenant with you, I say, if you do such, then I will do such. If you do this, then I will do this. And a covenant is precipitated on the fact that if one party doesn't do what they're supposed to do, then the other party is not obligated to follow through on their side. That's right. That's right. And so when we see a promise, we see that it goes both ways. That's right. We see that it's, it's a shared, as we talked about it on Monday, it's a shared relationship. It's not a one-sided thing. For if I am in a covenant with you and I'm doing all the work and you're benefiting from it, then I'm not getting anything out of it. And it, it's not equal. As my mother always used to say, any kind of relationship should be beneficial on both ends. And right. I talk about her all the times so and now she's here yeah. to hear me talk about her. Equity, yeah. But anytime you enter into any kind of relationship, your relationship should be mutually beneficial. That's right. For if you enter into a relationship and all the other person is doing is taking right. and taking right. and that's taking, right. Right. then it's not fair. There's no justice in that. That's not a relationship. That's that's a leash. That's right. But there are, we all know those people who just come to our taxes and they, they drag from us, they take from us, and then when there's nothing else to give, then they find someone else to feed off from. Can I get an amen this morning? But this was a covenantal relationship that God entered in with Abraham and he kept his covenant. He continued to be a God to his people. But what you have to understand is that the people, Israel, were stubborn people. They were a stubborn people and they desired to do things their own way. They knew the story. They knew, they heard the story about Abraham and the covenant and his obedience. They knew of his obedience. Right. First, we've been talking about in New Congress class, the reason that God made this covenant with Abraham was because of Abraham's obedience. Right. He said, because you will do this thing, because you will sacrifice your son, because you will give this gift that is so precious to you, because you won't hold, withhold the most important thing yes. 
yes. from me. Right. Because I gave you a command and I told you to sacrifice your son, even though this was your only son, even though this was the son that I promised of which to make a great nation. Right. Even though I gave you this promise and I'm asking you to give it back to me, right. you didn't hesitate to do it. Right. And because of that obedience, I'm right. going to bless you. Yeah. Because you've obeyed, because you didn't desire to keep this blessing for yourself. Yeah. Yes. I'm going to bless you. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Lord. And bless the Lord did. Yes. For we're still talking about Abraham and we're still talking about the fact that we are his seed My God. through faith mm -hmm. because we've been engrafted. And what, a, yes. what an awesome Bible study we had last Monday night where we didn't even get to the lesson. We talked about being engrafted and the right. fact that we are engrafted into the root. Oh. And so if the root is holy, so My are the branches. No. Not because we deserve but because of the great mercy of the Lord because he made a promise and he kept it and he, and he, not only did he make that promise to Abraham but he created a loophole so to speak because if that promise was just in the natural if it was just a natural promise then every one of us I don't know about you but I don't have any uh, Abraham's natural blood running through my veins so none of us would have access to that promise but because the Lord in his infinite mercy and love towards us created a backdoor so that we can be grafted in so that of the two we can be made one one, yeah. one body so there's no Jew nor Gentile nor bond nor free no male or female in Christ but we are all one in him but we are one in him the principle is to be in Christ for Christ is the body and so we must he, this body he, we are the church and the church is his body he is the head and we are the body and so one way or the other the church will be saved but will you be in the church for we started to kind of look back and we didn't even realize it at the time but all these lessons have been building up and building up on each other when we talked about Noah we talked about the fact that everyone in his house was saved from that flood. Why? Because they were covered under that head. They were obedient to their father. And so when he said it's time to get in the ark, they all got in. Right. They may not have understood it. They may not have comprehended it because none of them had seen rain up until this point. Right. But because they were obedient, they were saved. Right. Because they were obedient, yeah. they were saved. Yeah. Because they were yes. obedient, yes. they were saved. Yes. My God is a consistent God. Yes. yes. Let me tell you something about us. We are not consistent. That's right. That's right. We falter and we fail. We have our ups and downs. And sometimes we use that as the fact that we're human as an excuse. But despite our ups and downs, despite our changing ways, despite our unfaithfulness, yes. our God is a faithful God. Yes. And he doesn't change. So if Noah and his family had to be obedient to be saved, so do we have to be obedient to be saved. That's right. So do we have to follow the prescription that the Lord has set out for us in order for us to be delivered from the destruction that is coming. For if you don't believe destruction is coming, all you have to do is look around and listen to the news or take two minutes to walk in the streets. If you don't believe that the end is coming, all you have to do is flip on CNN or turn on the news and hear about famine and diverse pain, famines and earthquake in diverse places, wars and rumors of war. It doesn't take much to see that the end is nigh. It doesn't take much to see that these are the last and closing days. And church, this is not a time for us to play around. This is not a time for us to, to, to sit down and take things lightly. This is not a time for us to sit back and wait to, for the kingdom to come to us. But the word says the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violence take it by force. No matter who your parentage is or where you've come from, whether you have Abraham's blood flowing through your veins or not, if you are not obedient, you will find yourself in destruction. Right. If you're not obedient to the word, you will find yourself in destruction. Yes. It doesn't matter how much you come and praise. It doesn't matter how much you come and seek the Lord and pray. You can pray till your eyes turn blue. You can pray until I tell you until you, 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 you drop. But unless you're obedient, yes. it's all for not. It's all for not. Yes. Unless we are obedient, yes. nothing else matters. Yes, right. Unless we follow the prescriptions that the Lord has laid out, yes. nothing else matters.